memorial show morning tea will take place. Uh, firstly, we'll have uh, Jim Brady who will unveil the monument. And I now call on the sister of Maureen Keegan, Tressa, to uh, lay the wreath on behalf of the family and the, the committee of the Maureen Keegan Memorial. call upon the representatives of the Fourth International to uh, lay the read on behalf of the uh, main alert. The oration is being delivered today by Frank Keane on behalf of the Maureen Keegan Memorial Committee, Frank Keane, to deliver the oration. I feel humbled and very privileged and very inadequate, I must say, as having been asked to give this oration here today. During the course of one's life, a person crosses paths with different people over a long period. And in my own particular experience, I crossed paths briefly with Maureen Keegan. And Maureen Keegan come to my assistance unconditionally unreservedly at a time when I and other I did Maureen Keegan stood up to be counted and for that I will be forever grateful. It is fitting that we come here at Easter time to honour Maureen. Easter holds that very sig special significance for Republicans. It is a time when we honour not just the rising of 1916 and the sacrifices, but also the suffering of all those who strive and sometimes died in their efforts that freedom and justice should be attained on this island. 
The efforts of Irish women in the struggle for freedom and independence have not always been recognised. But hopefully this situation will one day be resolved. Maureen Keegan's efforts and sacrifices have not been ignored, and she truly stands out as a woman of the revolution. 81 years ago, a small army of volunteers took on the might of the British Empire here in Dublin. And Pierce at the GPO declared Ireland's right to national sovereignty and freedom by force of arms. Pierce was following a tradition set by Wolfe's poem, and later on the Fenians, the Invincibles, and in the post-1916 period, this tradition was carried on by the IRA right to the present day. It was carried on briefly by Sierra, and it was Maureen Keegan's tradition. Maureen adhered to the principles of Pierce and Connolly, and like Connolly, her goal was an Irish Socialist Republic. Long before I first met Maureen, her work for the Socialist Movement both nationally and internationally, had taken her to places as diverse as Paris and Corsica. And later on, she was involved in that famous People's Democracy March, which was ambushed by the Paisleyites at Burton Cullen. In later days, she acted as secretary to Bernadette Devlin. She was also involved with the Irish Civil Liberties League, the Labour Party, Dublin Young Socialist, and near the end of her life, she was the fourth international organiser for its Irish section. She studied the work of the great revolutionaries, in particular Connolly. She believed in the working class and republican struggle, and she demonstrated her theoretical and practical adherence to her socialist and republican principles by her involvement with and sacrifice for Sierra. Like the men of 1916, she put her money where her mouth was, so to speak. And like James Connolly, she seen no conflict of interest. Like Connolly, her goal was an Irish Socialist Republic. And like Connolly, she realized that such a republic could only survive and thrive within a worldwide network of such republics. She fought for Irish self-determination because she was an internationalist. A dream of Charter, perhaps, but who can say that given the right circumstances, the goodwill, the sincerity, the dedication, the sacrifices, that the aspirations of Connolly and Maureen Keegan cannot someday be realised. It is imperative on all of us to keep that flag flying. Finally, I will leave you with some lines from Brian O'Higgins, which he wrote concerning Terence McSweeney, but which I feel are equally applicable here. She lived a sharp and beautiful life and has left a beautiful field. She has sacrificed the hour to give service to all time. She has entered the company of the great and with them she will be remembered forever. Maureen, today we belatedly pay tribute to your memory. From my husband. Anybody who wants to say a few words on behalf of the Sword International? There's little to add to, to the fine oration made by Frank Keane, but I will say uh, that there are certain tasks uh, that we are simply here to
to raise this headstone, but not just to honor the dead, however worthy of honor we all agree she was. As I said, the purpose of this uh, ceremony is also to act an act of defiance of the prevailing zeitgeist that has been uh, imposed by years of Thatcherism and Reaganism and uh, is uh, still being pushed and is likely to be uh, pushed very strongly on us in the next year in the general election. We must all spare, remember that Maureen was above all an activist an informed activist, but an activist for all that. We must remember, too, that the daughter of the woman with whom she worked so closely, the daughter of Bernadette Devlin Makaliski, is at present being railroaded on trumped-up charges and, be, uh, uh, and being victimized for while she is pregnant, and we must act uh, uh, against this. We must remember that all over the world, in Colombia, in Rwanda, people are being persecuted. And we must try and act to, to, to oppose uh, the, these persecutions. I will not keep you. Thank you. Roger, we call on the bugler. Thank uh -huh.